Just to let everyone know. It's recording. All right. So we have two more lessons. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong page. We have just one more lesson in here, don't we? Yeah. And then we'll get new books. Okay, so I'll have them for next week. Well, I'll clear out and turn it over to you. <laughs> Takes a village, huh? It does. <laughs> to take care of me, it does. I know. I left my purse back there. I'm not going to Oh, yeah. I'm it on others. We do a good job of that, don't we? It's good to be back in class. I missed you all. And uh, appreciate Steve teaching, what, three weeks in a row for us. And You're welcome. The class was a little yeah. upset about it. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here? God, darn it. I thought you'd come back. No, no, no. I think Green is very good. It's a big call. Yeah. Okay, today our topic is a song of thanksgiving. And, uh, of course, the focus is that we worship with joy and praise and thanksgiving. Uh, your quarterly opens telling us to story of a group of business people that were partying at an Atlanta restaurant when in walks an old Georgia farmer and he came in for lunch and he sat down and when his meal was brought to him he bowed his head and prayed. He gave thanks to God for the food. When he finished praying one of the partiers taunted him and said hey old farmer does everybody do that where you live? Pretty tacky, huh? I know anytime I see anyone in a restaurant take the time to bow their head and pray and thank God for their meal, I'm impressed. <laughs> I wouldn't ever think to say something like that. Well, a lot of people are thankful for something in their life, but they don't know who to thank. They're thankful they have a house, a car, a job. They're grateful they don't have any serious illnesses. They're thankful there's food on their table to eat. Well, our quarterly tells us about an author whose name is Amy Morin, and in Psychology Today New Magazine, she wrote, there are seven scientifically proven uh, benefits of gratitude. It says it helps deliver us from toxic emotions, and it lists envy, resentment, frustration, it helps us sleep better. It improves our self-esteem. It cuts down on our aches and pains. They need to patent that. Huh? <laughs> but she never says to whom you direct that gratitude. Mm. But however, believers know mm. who to thank. And knowing their lives are a gift from God, they enter his gates with thanksgiving. They direct their gratitude to him. And they're glad to do it. And they should do it with joy. And question one asks, how has giving thanks to God lifted your spirit? Sometimes you just get excited. You know, get thinking, you know. Just get excited. I can imagine you doing that. Yes. <laughs> yes. We can get excited every Sunday. Yes, yes. <laughs> And that's, it's the right thing to do. And, and you know, showing gratitude always feels good. Don't you feel good when you thank someone for something? Uh, it just lifts your spirit. Do you sometimes find it hard to praise joyfully and why? I said life isn't always easy. Would anybody understand that? And it's hard to be joyful. When things are tough, isn't it? When things aren't going our way, getting better. 
And question three, how do songs of thanksgiving remind you of God's character? Here's the words in the song, you know, it's hopes. You make to know why it's goodness. Yeah. I tried to think of some songs with joy in it. Of course, I thought of joy, joy, joy that the kids sang. <laughs> and I thought of joyful, joyful, we adore you. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Any others you think of? Yeah, now that's when I thought at first with the kids. Uh, don't know that we ever sang it in worship, but maybe we did. And uh, I know we did in kids' worship. I know. Mary? We did. Oh, we did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, up, upstairs, yeah. Well, our scripture today is from Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. That's the whole psalm. Uh, and so we'll start off with the reader for the first three verses. This is going to be a brief lesson, I will forewarn you. <laughs> a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in his presence with thanking. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hates who had it, made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Thank you, Clarence. I, I, when I was looking at this, I, uh, you know, it was so short, I kind of compared the two Psalms, and uh, I really, uh, they're very alike. Both versions declare that the entire earth, everything and everyone in creation should give God the worship he deserves, a shout, a noise, a joyful sound. And the God of creation deserves worship and mm -hmm. praise from everywhere and everyone. And it tells us to serve and worship. This is combining both the King James and the NIV. The Lord with gladness and to come before his presence with singing joyful songs, and the worshipers join together with as much energy, enthusiasm as they can muster in the joy they present God. And it said, no, the Lord is God. It is he that made us, not we ourselves. We are his. Mm -hmm. We are his people, mm -hmm. the sheep of his pasture. And the imperative no signifies acknowledges or confesses that he is our covenant Lord. Mm -hmm. He is the only true God. And they confess their accountability to him and how privileged they are. What a position that we hold as a child of God. And the Lord in turn cares for them. And it gives us the illustration of the shepherd image in that scripture. It was important to the Israelites that they would be ruled by a good shepherd. And God is the perfect shepherd who would bring his sheep into safety, provide sustenance, and the Israelites praised him for being just the shepherd they needed. And they had had a long history of being led by God and cared for by God. Question four asks, what was the entire creation summoned to do? Shout for joy to the Lord. Right. Joy, a joyful noise. And what attitude should believers have in their relationship with the Lord? Praise him. Serve him with gladness. Yeah. And what truths about God did the psalmist affirm? We belong to God. We belong to the shepherd. Okay. He's the God who made us. We are his people, aren't we? We are, we, we are from God. We're not from ourselves. Okay. Uh, through God. We, we are, God, God gives the gift to all human will. Okay. And how did the psalmist portray God's relationship with his children? He protects as a shepherd, shepherd. didn't he? As he protects and provides. Okay, and our last two verses is similar to read those. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving <laughs> and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, he, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth is due to all generations. I knew I could count on you, Geraldine, <laughs> <laughs> with enthusiasm and joy. Did you hear that? Sometimes we're timid about being joyful it's in worship. Pardon me? I think it'd be hard to read that timidly. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, in verse 4, the psalmist reminds us of the importance of expressing gratitude to God. It's not that he needs it, but it's important that we recognize where our blessings come from. And Thanksgiving is recognizing all the good things God does for us. Uh, we know that not everything in life feels good. Uh, life is full of pain at times. But yet there is much good in our lives to be thankful for if we remember to look for it. And that brought to mind the song, Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. And, and then that led me to think of, I've talked about it before, the alphabet prayer, where you begin with the letter A, and, and it's a thankful prayer. And something you're thankful for that begins with A, and then B, and then C, and on down. And I've told you, again, sometimes you have to get creative because <laughs> nothing comes to mind. And maybe I'd say for A, if I was kind of blank, all my family or something like that. Uh, but but it's it makes you think about how much you really have to be thankful for and be sure and tell God how much uh, how he has provided for you. I'm sure he loves to hear it. Um, when we praise his name, we're worshiping God for who he is, not just for what he does for us. And I think that's such an important thing to remember. We're, you know, we thank him for all that we have and are, but um, we just need to remember that it's not so much what he does for us that we worship him for, but because he is the almighty God. And in verse 5, we're reminded of God's covenant with us, his continual love and faithfulness through the good times, through the bad times. And for this reason, we can give him thanks in every circumstance, as Paul calls us to do in 1 Thessalonians. And Paul reminds us in Romans 8, nothing in all creation can drive a wedge between the love of God and his children, especially those founded in in Jesus Christ. Uh, and the eight asks, what mindset should believers have when they gather for worship? Praise. 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 Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And what reason did the psalmist give for expressing gratitude to God? I, God is worthy. And Janelle, for all he's done for us. And you know, we're here to praise him. But do you realize we praise him? But look how good he is to us. Who can you, you know, you can go to some earthly person and give them everything you have, and they still will come like a snake and bite you in the back. But God <laughs> praise him. He put you here to praise him. And then he just bless him. Oh, he just bless him. He take yeah. care of him. I don't care if you're going through a wreck. An accident or a loved one lost, he still he take care. He just won't leave you by yourself. And if you hurt him, just start calling on Jesus. And I tell you, he'll come every time. He has shown up fixing. Yeah. Thank you, Geraldine. Mm -hmm. And the last little section is called uh how to be thankful. And the people must be joyful when they're giving thanks. And this joyfulness includes shouting and singing to the Lord as they worship him. And Psalm 100 calls us to worship in that way. Every one of us is an amazing creation of God's artistry. It is he who made us. We are his. We belong to him. And when we know and follow God, we belong in the pasture of the Good Shepherd. Yes. 
on that. Uh, would you uh, transform eternal uh, to the kingdom of eternity? And we are, we are from God and God is with us. Mm -hmm. And we will go to mm -hmm. eternity with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your quarterly asks these questions. How often do you find a love that lasts forever? Or a person who loves you faithfully, regardless of what you say or do? Hmm. That last part is tricky. <laughs> <laughs> every day with the Lord. Every day with the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> well, we need to give thanks. Praise his name with great joy and gladness. Mm. Question 10 asks, why is it thankful? Is being thankful tied to understanding that God is our creator and shepherd? Why is being thankful? It makes you think about how good he is, the things you've been through, and how he has brought you through. So that's just makes you, you can't get that to think. You know, I got a reason and a right to praise the Lord. Yes, yes. I like the way you say the right. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, he created us and he cares for us. And we do need to be thankful. When was the last time you felt as if you were in God's presence? This morning when I listened to uh, Revelation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a list. I said, anytime I pray with certain Christian friends and went in RCC's sanctuary and Michael Johnson is preaching. I know there are times when you have felt that you were in the Lord's presence. Karen? Well, um, I shared this with Stacy and I was in the back of about 11 o'clock. I went to bed, and for some reason, the Lord woke me up at 1 o'clock, and I didn't really jump. <laughs> I got up, and the TV on TV, they had a couple of pastors. Oh, it's the first day this week, okay. And he told me this little lesson, so I did, I did my lesson. Okay. And then we had the one pastor was tell the truth yesterday I forgot to eat breakfast, lunch. I was doing all kinds of stuff that I wanted to do. And I was getting results. I was fasting. And then my friend went to took me to the store, um, monster monster. And I came back and at seven thirty I finally ate. You're not diabetic or you would have passed out before that. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. So I know that this Sunday is fast. And it was strange that the first thing I was not uh, having, this is mm -hmm. the pastor, he was saying we should all be back in the morning. This Wednesday is prayer and fasting, of course, the third Wednesday. Also, the elder prayer vigil, all church, and the sign-up sheet for it is up on the, the counter there in the narthex. So if you haven't signed up, please do so. And the last question to your lesson is, can you be a quiet person, yet still be incredibly joyful in the Lord? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, I can be quiet, but I tell you. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're right. Geraldine, when was the last time you were quiet? Do you remember? <laughs> I think you can be quiet, too. I think uh, that your heart can rejoice in the Lord if, if quietly. Well, mm -hmm. I, I have a statement. Trish gave this to me. On my wall, it says, "Be still." They know no, that I'm kind of yeah. 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 beautiful yeah. verse. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we need to be shut still. up and be still and talk to him. Okay. God does not speak when we're when we're talking. He speaks when we're quiet. Yeah. 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 
Uh, we want to add one more to our prayer list for today, and that's uh, Geraldine. This week could be a hard one because of Clint's birthday coming up. And we yes, want to... and we, um, I won't be here next Sunday. Y'all pray for my traveling grace. We are all going to Arizona to the oldest border. Y'all going to be there for Thanksgiving. And so I'm leaving on his birthday, on the 22nd. So I'm going to talk about, you know, God is amazing grace. He's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's already fine. Yeah. yeah. He's already fine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I'm going by myself. But I'm going to fly back with one of my daughters. So I'm taking a vacation with it. So I'll leave work the third, third, so the 21st, and I won't get back to December the second. Thank God. And get a break. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother, the report on my brother, he, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, bagged out because they, I don't know why they didn't want to like riding, and he, they could, he couldn't ride in a car before. So he's going to Mid America region. And they said it's a really good place, so he should be there on Monday. I stayed with him a long time yesterday and prayed for Irene, his lady friend. She takes care of him. I said, Girl, you take care of him like I took care of my husband. She is so good. I said, Boo, you are so blessed to have someone to be right there. She's been staying with him every night, and she takes good care of him. So that's a blessing. You know, and he still, he can't, you know, he got the, these trembles. And they have to give him medicine because his leg yesterday kept jumping and they don't want him to jump too much. And, you know, he got that plate in his back. Now. So he's doing all that. I call him Boo, but his name is John. Yeah, John. He named after my dad. <laughs> his name is John. And uh, he, he, he said, I'm doing good, sis. I'm doing good. And all the nurses and everybody, they just love him. He said, they come in, he said, I'm going to pray for you. He prayed for all of them. So I said, that's a blessing. You know, and they, they come in, they go like, oh, he prayed for me yesterday. You know, so that's that. I, I, you got the right attitude, sir. <laughs> okay. So uh, a positive mental attitude. Yeah. 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 Okay. If nobody has anything else to add, we'll go to our Lord in prayer. Lord God, our creator and sustainer. We bow in humble adoration, yet we're bursting with love for you and your loving care of each one of us. How amazing you are. And yet you call us your children mm -hmm. and love us with a love mm -hmm. that will never let us go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear Father, for loving us so. May all that we do and all that we say bring honor to your name. That's our heart's desire. And Father, this day we lift to you those we have praised for prayer. The Dunn family, the Faust family, Paul Hudson, Dave Burton, Larry Stevens, Matt Smith, Jim Schooley, Kelsey Lawhead and Dominic, David Alonghi, Sue Bambini's brother, Butch Daughtery, Wayne Brooke, Geraldine Wigfall, Geraldine's brother, John, and wife, Irene. Father, we just lift these, some for travel mercy, some for healing, some for comfort, but each one in need of your presence, your encouragement, your love. And Father, we know that they are theirs. Father, we just are so grateful for, that you are a very real part of our lives, that you are with us every step of every day, leading us, guiding us, pulling us back at times. We have a tendency to get in trouble sometimes. And Father, we just are so grateful for a love like that. Father, we just lift up our church, its leaders, 
our pastor Michael. We praise you for his continued service to our church. Help us to be moving in the right direction. Bless our efforts, bless the pledge drive. Father, we're so grateful for our church. So grateful for those who worship here. Beautiful family of God. And Father, this day, we just ask that your hand be upon each member. And that they know how much you love them. And that they will respond with joy. And shouting and just let their joy be known this day in worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brunch Amen. from 9 30 to 10 30. They're working on it right now. It'll be good. <laughs> 30 and 9 are the fun part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, the pledge cards will be at the end of the thought we would.